Ladies and gentlemen, today is November 24th, two days from Turkey Day, and today is episode 271 of the King and Kale Show in safe mode, and this is the tutorial on Tuesday about color theory. I totally messed up the way that I usually say that, but whatever. My name is Keenan Lafferty. We're going to be jumping into our piece today. We're working more on violet. More to come on that. Before we actually get into the tutorial, we need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane. Oh, I'm already at the top, so let's go ahead and scroll down. Thank you guys so much for submitting your amazing work. If you'd like to check out all these cool pieces for yourself, just type in that tinyurl.com slash cancalefanart. Go see all the pieces for yourself. Like the page. Submit some of your own. Submit some of your own. And most importantly, come get some cookies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our good old tutorial. So today, yes, we are learning about color theory. Color theory. And before we actually move into that thing, because my entire, most of you know, we're rebooting, we're starting the show over, starting from safe mode, everything's black and white. I lost a lot of stuff in my, when my old computer took a dump, and I'm now just beginning to reclaim some of those files. Uh, luckily, you know, I was able to preserve Violet but the cool thing is, is that having to like reboot the show or restart it in safe mode has given me a lot of ideas. Like kind of like rebuilding from the ground up has made me realize that there's some cool things that we can do. And speaking of that, that's where I'm going to say um, where we started off last week. Basically, I'm going to start doing this from now on and we'll see if this works. So you can click this picture right here to go back to the previous episode because this is where we ended on last week's episode. So yeah, just click anywhere on this page here and it should take you to the beloved last week's episode and with that we'll go ahead and close it down close that clicky thing down because now we are here we are here we've done a lot of work as you can tell and I know you probably would love it if I time lapsed it wouldn't you but I suck and I did not do that because I was still setting up my time lapse program my time lapse software and now I finally got it done but yes but this one will not have a time lapse it's not like you guys really learned anything from that anyway. It's just entertainment. But I will dissect these layers. I will dissect these layers for those of you at home that want to know exactly what's going on here because we're doing a very special new type of technique. A new type of technique that I've been teaching you guys for the last few weeks. And again, if you want to see even further back to the black and white stage, I don't know, maybe I'll put like a link here too. Boom! Yeah, click that. And then you can go back and we, you can see me sculpt this a little bit more in the black and white stage. Okay, that will go away now. Go away! All right, we're just having having tons of fun with the clicky, linky thingies. Okay, so we started with black and white. And then we masked everything, which was last week. And then we got to this point. And this is the point where you might say, wow, Kenyon, that's such an amazing picture. Oh, wow, your overpainting is so amazing. You're... The way that you've actually gone in and added all these details is so beautiful. Can you show me how you did the overpainting? Wait, wait a minute. There's no overpainting. It's just a, it's just a contrast layer and then the lines. You take away the lines. <gasps> oh, what has happened, Violet? What happened to you? Yes, this is actually what the picture looks like without the lines. So actually, because we set up our picture in black and white like this, and we allowed all of our values to come through here, what we actually ended up doing is we colored the lines. So let me show you, let me take away everything else so you can actually see what's happening with the lines. So if you, wait, is this right? Oh no, no, that's not right. There we go. Okay, so if you look closely, I taught you guys some very important things a couple weeks ago, or I think it might have been I mean, I've done it many times. I've talked about line coloring, okay? Line coloring. And there's two different ways to line color. One is you have your lines here, right? And of course they're transparent because we learned about sketch lifting. We learned about sketch lifting. Click here to go see how to learn how to do this. Turn your background clear. Um, I, I did a little, oh man, I, that's gonna be a hard one. Cause I, I summarized it in like three steps like last week, but whatever, click this and then I'll, I'll just figure that out too. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go crazy with the links today. Okay, so click that to go to that. And then um, and then we have clear lines. And then <laughs> you can begin choosing colors. And when you lock the pixels with this magical checkerboard right down here, see that checkerboard? You click that button. And then you're able to go in here and you can paint the colors or paint the lines whatever color you wish. Okay, and that's really how we're achieving this 
this um, illusion, right? It's a magic trick, it's an illusion, right? And okay, so that's one way to color the lines, but another way to do it is actually what's happening right here. These two layers, layer 29 and 30, as you can see right here, are actually just clipped back to the lines. If we remove them, look at what is actually happening here. There's a bunch of colors everywhere. We get rid of this, see, it's just a bunch of colors that I've laid down. But when you clip it back to the lines, it says, okay, I'll only show those colors where the lines exist. So it's another way to kind of color your lines, but then still be able to like remove it if you want to do it a later, you know, erase, draw it down. But so either way you pick, we have colored the lines. And this is, I just wanted to show you this because this is actually where we're getting all of our details from. So now if we combine those two things, we combine those lines with our colors, witness what happens here. Watch what happens. Whoa. That is crazy, that is crazy. It seems like it wouldn't work, right? It seems like it wouldn't work, but it does, it does, it totally does. The lines come in and they put the value on top of everything. And it takes into account a lot of, like, cause we colored the lines specifically like here in the cheek. You're like, oh, how'd you get that subsurface scattering going on there? Well, literally it's just, if we take away the lines, see there's some subsurface uh, stuff happening there. There's some color choice that's happening there. More than that, I've actually colored the lines, so that way they appear a little bit more red. And let me see if I can actually show you that. So if these lines were all black, see how once we start turning them all dark black, you get like these muddy textures in here, it looks kind of nasty. This is where we started, this is where we started. And then adding that color back into the lines, see now we have these reds and purples, it softens things up, softens things, makes them look really nice, gets them ready for overpainting. We're getting ready for overpainting. But I digress because today we're talking about color theory and all this stuff, all, the, all these magic tricks are nice and everything, but it doesn't mean crap if you don't know how to pick your colors. You must know how to pick your colors and we're gonna talk about that today. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is the beginning. Let's talk about the beginning and why we chose the colors that we did, which is also talked about a little bit in the last episode. But today we're gonna go a little bit more in depth with it since we are now at this point and it's a little bit more interesting to look at. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna draw your guys' attention to is the background, okay? So what color are we using here? Well, that's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and just eye drop it. Okay, so we're doing blues. We're doing blues, cool colors in the background. Cool colors in the background, but then we have this gradient that's heading towards the bottom, heading towards the bottom. Not, not this bottom, the, this, the bottom of the piece, okay? Down here. And we have oranges. So automatically, I'm sure you guys know about complementary colors. It's like, hey, blue and orange. What a nice mix, what a nice mix. But the more important reason why I did this was because I wanted to have this character, because th this character is obviously a, a villain in my comic, right? And I wanted her to have a bit of a, like this sort of like mysterious kind of like scary or villainous look to her. And one of the best ways to make somebody look evil is just, hey, just put an underlighting on them, right? If you ever taken a, a flashlight and held it up to your face upside down, it automatically makes you look more evil. So that's what we are taking, bringing that into here. And we have the contrast of a really cool background, cool background mixed with the warm light that is coming up and it is going to be affecting, you know, areas like here. Basically you want to think about the warm light is our front, it's like our front main light, right? And I want it to be soft. I imagine it's, it could be like, maybe like a fiery type of thing, or maybe it's like a lantern or something. But um, all in all, I want all these areas that are being affected by this light that's coming up from the bottom to have a warm glow to them. And then I want the shadows as they transition to cool off, to cool off. So let's go ahead and take another, uh, color here and let's go ahead and color this in. So see all, you got this transition and then you got cool colors, cool colors, because hey, look at this. Well, there's actually cool light coming from here and affecting right there. And I'm picking another color because it's too similar. Affecting right there, basically all of the sides of the character. This is what you call a rim light and it makes your pieces look really awesome and you should always do it, right? <laughs> Doesn't always have to be blue, but it's always nice to have a rim light to kind of kick up or kind of accentuate the silhouette of your character. See how it just looks really nice along those edges. Oh, it actually looks really cool to actually add that blue in. It, that, like that really like saturated blue, I actually kind of like that. That makes it look even more like 
like awesome. I don't know. Maybe I should put something like that in there. Ah, happy accidents. Even though I hate that word. Even though I hate that word. I'm starting to. I'm starting to warm up to it. Barely starting to warm up to it. Hey, you can call it a breakthrough. Why not? Happy accidents. Happy accidents on the show. So there you go. So I actually like that color. That looks really cool. So, but that is our rim light. So we have two things happening here. We have a cool rim light coming down. And then we have warm light going up. Warm light going up. And so this brings us to our next thing. Color picking. Color picking and color theory. Color theory. Most important thing. Most important things that you can learn. And um, yeah, it'll just make your pictures look really nice. It'll make them look, because if you look at this, oh here, in fact, let me go ahead and pull up something else because I was actually doing another version of this. And this is a perfect example of issues that I was having with picking my colors, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to the screen here. So this is an earlier version. So I want you guys to pay close attention to the differences between these two. So I'm gonna switch to this one, then, oh here. I'm gonna switch to this one, switch to that one. So do you see the differences that are happening here? Look very closely because there's a couple things that are happening and the reason why I ended up going with this one, I will explain in just a moment. So originally I wanted to say, um, I was like, I really like the contrast that's happening in this face here. One of the reasons why I liked this, I kept coming back to this piece because I just felt like the warmness of her face was a very good focal point because it's surrounded, everything around this area is all cool colors, all cool colors. So it just naturally brings your attention into the face. This is a very important thing to do um, in your art, in your pictures as well. We did it all the time in the artwork or the splash art things for Riot and we do it. And I always like to think about that stuff now, focal points. I didn't know you could actually control, you could mind control the eyes of your viewers to look where you want them to look. And that you do, my friends, with contrast. Contrast, not only in color, but also you'll notice that a lot of other values around her are dark. There's lots of dark values around this face. Everything around this face is dark, right? And we have clear contrast. Even actually the background represents a lighter color. This part is brighter, and that looks like an Illuminati symbol. But uh, yes, Illuminati confirmed. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Now it's uh, now it's Mr. Cheese. There we go from uh, that Rocco's Modern Life episode. You guys know which one I'm talking about. There we go. Make it a little less creepy. All right. But anyway, so we have a lighter shape also being in contrast with the darker shape, right? The darker shape being her face. So we have a lot of really nice contrasts that are pulling us up here. But anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's talk about the colors. Let's talk about why I chose these colors and why I ended up going back to this one. Okay, so I normally told, I told myself, I was like, okay, well, violet, I imagine, the Marauders have like this really deep kind of like dark blue, almost purple type of leather that they'd wear. In fact, I'd say it's more of just like a dark blue. So the, the issue that I kept running into is I said, okay, well, we have blue leather, we have a dark blue leather, and then we have a bright orange, or yeah, we have an orange warm light coming from beneath. So normally you would ask yourself, okay, well, what color is this actually going to turn, right? Start getting into like these reds, and this is a good time to actually bring out your eyedropper tool because it's really good. In fact, I was doing this more often now than I ever have done before, is I was actually referencing photos. I was trying to find photos with uh, and, and watch their hue shifts, right? And hue shifts is basically what happens when you grab your, take your eyedropper and move it along like this transition right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that really quick, just so I can really pinpoint what I'm talking about. So the transition from this light part to this blue part. Now, do you guys see what's happening over here on this little Richter scale thing? Watch as that changes from a reddish hue and then it's gonna start going more blue. And that's called a hue shift. And that's something that happens in real life and it looks freaking awesome every time you do it. So always do it, always do it. But the most important part is learning how to hue shift and learning what color needs to shift to what. And that was where I was running into my first problem. So I was like, okay, well it's blue and it's mixing with a warm color. It's mixing with a warm color. So I would say that, okay, so we're blue and in order to go warm, we need to go through purple and then up to red. 
which is going to be closer to like orange, right? Because the way that it goes is you go to red and then you come out on the other side. You Pac-Man through the other side and then you start going up to, into orange. And then basically these hues can constantly go and go and go. It's like it's like a never ending cycle anyway. So um, anyway, so this is the problem that I was having, okay? And I'm gonna try my best to explain this in terms that will not blow your mind completely. I'm trying to simplify things today. So basically I'm saying, okay, we've got a blue, blue leather mixed with warm light. And I was thinking orange, red. So I started moving towards purple. And then that's why I got this type of, uh, that's why I got this type of transition, this hue transition, right? And then down here, I was like, hey, this looks actually really nice because now I feel like this is a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. Like this feeling of like this nice, cool shadow, see this blue and then it just kicks way up to red looking again at the little Richter scale. Uh, I really liked this transition, but it just still didn't feel realistic. It didn't feel realistic. And here's where the main theory comes into play. This was my big mistake. And the reason why you'll look at this one, and then you'll look at this one, and you say that this one feels more uniform, this one feels more realistic, and here's why. Because I was not mixing blue with a red light. If I was mixing blue with a red light, then it would have been more kind of like this color. It probably would have turned more like these colors that I was showing here. But I'm not mixing with a red light. I'm mixing with a warm orange light, a very bright orange light. And you guys know that blue and, or uh, at least I hope you know this, blue and orange are complete opposites. And what happens when you bring two opposite colors together? Have you ever done that before? Have you ever mixed paint together of two opposite colors? What happens? Well, if you've ever done it, then you would know this. Okay, I, I mean, I'm acting like I know. I actually just had somebody tell this to me, <laughs> but, but this is the way that it goes. And it works in real life too. When opposite colors come into contact with each other, they desaturate. They desaturate and they move towards gray. They neutralize each other. And uh, oftentimes they'll actually darken a little bit too. They'll darken a little bit. So if I had this blue leather, let's say that this is a little bit closer to say our local color. So here's my thought process on that. So this is our blue, it's kind of like our local color. So here's what I'm gonna say, is sometimes you might wonder, it's like, okay, well, do I go purple or do I go like towards orange? Or yeah, like towards orange and green, because it's like, if it's blue and a yellow light, then it would go green, right? So a lot of times this is where I get confused. It's like, well, do I go the green way or do I go the purple way? Uh, because they're both technically warm colors. But rather than worrying about that so much, I would say focus first and foremost on desaturating. Move towards that gray, move towards that gray. Move over, buddy, move over. And then this is actually the colors that you are going to begin seeing. And are those looking familiar? Yes, that's right. Those are the colors that I ended up using here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual color that's happening here and why we like it so much. So the actual color that is being used is, look at that, it's a warm color. It's a warm color. I would arguably say that the color of my light is probably right around this area. It's a very bright orange. So to have it be that, to have it be that orange and then to desaturate, because it's darkened and desaturating, right? We're going up this way. When we put that in, when we put that on there, that leads us to believe that this is either, this is a very like desaturated blue, uh, this is a very desaturated blue type of leather thing. Because if it was really, if it was like super blue, if it was like a very dark blue, then it would probably be something, it'd probably just be a darker version of it, right? And actually move more towards blue. So if we wanted to make something look more blue, a darker blue, and this is where stuff gets really crazy because now you have to start thinking in terms of uh, what's the word? You need to start thinking in terms of relativity. You're thinking in terms of relativity. And this part always just blows my mind. It blows my mind wide open. And, and it kind of hurts sometimes. It kind of hurts, right? So we're gonna go ahead and drop in some green in there. And I think this is the color that I'm looking for. To make this look dark blue, we would have it look more like this. Okay, so we're looking for something more like that. And look at that, it's like more purple, it's more purple. And this is something that I want you guys to understand, is that the most important thing that you can do when you're setting up your colors 
is to, first of all, understand that when you have two opposing colors, this is, this is the first thing that you should do, is to think in terms of, you already know that it's gonna be probably pretty dark and probably pretty desaturated because that's just the way that things go. That's the way things happen when you have a, um, an opposing color, right? You have, you have an opposing color and an opposing light that are opposites, that are opposites. And a good, way to exa or a good example of this is actually uh, 3D glasses. 3D glasses is a perfect example of this. And the reason is because, um, do you realize that when you put those on, you know, you look at a piece of paper and it's white with two images, right? There's a red one and a blue one. But when you put on those 3D glasses, what happens is when you're looking through the red filter, you don't see the red anymore. Instead, it contrasts with the blue. The red lens, now all you can see is the blue. And then similarly, in the blue lens, now all you can see is the red because they are contrasting. And that's the most important thing that I can tell you guys is that you gotta understand where the contrast happens, things will desaturate and they'll get darker. They'll get way, way darker. Much, much darker. So this is something, that's probably what I would do if I wanted it to be like a darker blue. I'd probably do something more like that. In fact, I kind of like that too, man. I like that a lot, actually. Maybe I will put some more of that stuff in there, more of that color. Because I want it to be a lighter, I want it to obviously be like a lighter value than like the sleeves here, because I wanted these to be like our dark color, our nice, dark, deep, um, almost like a silk. I imagine this being like a silk uh, type of material. So it's like these, um, these little speculars going through here would be like really hot, like really bright, something like that. Yeah, but that's gonna be going into materials, which is gonna be our next, it's gonna be next week's tutorial, so we don't wanna to get too far ahead of ourselves. But um, yeah, I actually really like that. Man, I'm just having a good time over here, having a good time. So, but here's the thing, look at this, look at this. So based upon relativity, everything that we've learned today, if you were to look at that jacket, would you say that that jacket was green? Or would you say that it's actually more blue? Does it look more blue because of, we know that the way that the, the light, like the orange light is affecting everything else. So we look at this and we say, okay, I think that is blue. That is not a green, um, that is not a green uh, vest thing. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to cheat it a little bit, like put a little bit of blue in there just to kind of help the transition, like to see if I can just kind of cheat a little bit, like put a, put a little bit of blue in there, see if you can get away with it. Just a tad bit in there. Makes for an interesting transition nonetheless. So let's see how that looks. Ah! Ooh, actually, I really like that. But again, we might be going too far blue, I don't know. But, um, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about is that understand your main, uh, like understand the general, um, what's the word? You wanna think of your color palette as being cohesive. You want everything to just revolve around it uh, and like uh, everything just needs to work together. And a good example of that is obviously we're working with a lot of, of warm colors, lots of warm colors and wherever we have cool colors, you notice how they're all, I want you to pay attention to the general direction of this thing, right? How close it is to the gray mark whenever it's a cool color. We have our cool lights, see, it's over here. We have this cool light, see, we're still way over here. This one is like way the heck over there. So all of these colors are dark and desaturated if they're blue, right, if they're blue. The background can be much more saturated because obviously that's more of like a framing piece and this and that, but, um, but for the most part, Everything just feels cohesive. But here's how you ruin that. Here's how you ruin that. Because if I were to say what the local color of Violet's actual vest was, I'd say it's probably something like, uh, and local color is a fancy way of saying with a, light, with a white light shining on, what color would it be? With a white light shining on it. It'd be like this. So I'd be like, hey, let's go ahead and just put that in there. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, and then it just starts to kind of like look weird. It starts to look weird because now you're adding in weird colors that don't really occur anywhere else in the piece. And it's like, okay, well I can fix that. Let's just put some more purple in, right? You start putting some purple in and then it just looks weird. You see how like those purples just feel so out of place and it just doesn't, it doesn't fit anymore. You have corrupted 
your color palette. You have corrupted your color palette and destroyed your piece. So I hope you're happy. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to before we did that. I'm going to save that. Yeah, I actually really like that. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck with this. So the only thing that's pulling me back to this one here is that a couple of things. Probably the biggest thing that is pulling me back to what we did here originally is that it's just a lighter value. Do you see how we made things darker by doing this? Do you see how we made the actual vest darker by adding those other colors in? Whereas I really like the, the contrast between this vest and this sleeve here. Whereas here we have less, we have a little less. It still looks cool, but it just doesn't have that same oomph. It doesn't have that same uh, clarity that this one did. So that's also going to be a matter of a matter of your, um, a matter of preference basically. So, but now, um, and that brings me to another point. That brings me to another point. Is that really at the end of the day, color theory for me is really just trying a lot of stuff out, which is why I taught you guys, again, all these masks. The last thing that I will show you guys before we end today is all these masks. I want you guys to notice that all of these masks are on a different layer. Look at that. And that's interesting, huh? It's very interesting that I would do that. So we have this on its own mask. We have the skin on its own mask. We have the eye on its own mask, iris, and all the way up to the hair. Now, the reason that I do this is because I want you guys to start, probably one of the best ways that you can begin playing around with color and building like cohesive color palettes is first of all, select your background because your background and the the environment that your character in, is in is going to play a major role. It's going to play probably the biggest role in the colors that you're going to pick because everything needs to go along with these colors in the background, right? And, and the best way for you to know that that's working is just to use your eyes. Use your eyes because they're not going to lie to you. They're either going to say this looks good or it doesn't. But that brings me to my next thing and that is the masks. So the good thing about putting everything on its own mask, on its own layer, is this. So this is basically the vest and like the chest piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control U, Control U. I put some colors in there that I like, but I kinda wanna just play around with a couple different ones. Let's see what would happen if we changed it more green. How does that make our piece feel? In fact, let me zoom out a little bit. Let me just kinda make it more green. Oh, interesting, that changes the entire feel of the character. And if it ever gets to a point where it starts feeling really out of place, Here's what I found is the best thing to do. So let's say we want it to be like purple, right? And it's like this. Let's say you turn it to this and it's like, oh, I really like that. But this purple just doesn't go along with anything else in the picture. The way that you can paint purples or add purples to the piece is by simply desaturating them. Once you desaturate them, you begin to control them. You control them. And do you see how as I desaturate it, it begins to fall in line with the rest of the piece? Even darkening it helps a lot too. So darken and desaturate will begin to control the color, bring it back towards your uh, basic, um, your genome, your, your color genome, your color double helix, and you'll have a good time. So that's why I tell you guys to put all these different things on different layers. And you know, in the end, you might just want your character to be blue skin at the end. You know, it's like, you never know. You never know. So you might as well have that option available, okay? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. I'm gonna be uploading this piece to Patreon. If you wanna see the PSD and the layers all for yourself, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place where you can go support the show. So if you wanna go do that, just click this little link right here, it'll take you over there, and you can uh, support the show and get today's PSD, along with all the other PSDs that have been ever created on the show, and you can check them out for yourselves. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to my sponsors. I am just, I literally just got the toaster from my hard drive so I can get the animated things back. But until then, I love you guys, Laura Bashir, Nonplussed, and David Cariello. You guys are awesome. My amazing sponsors keep the lights running at night. You guys are awesome. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care.